we're going to take a look at an example of inline JavaScript. So we have this little box, and if we click it, it'll jump over here. And notice it changes colors when we click it. We've done something very similar before. Let's go ahead and take a look. Say rectangle. And let's go ahead and say ID box color. For now, I'm just going to say red. Width 100, height 100. Let's say x is going to be 0. y is going to be a little bit more complex. All right, let's take a look. Save run. There's our box. Now we need to animate it a little bit. I don't even want to call that animation because it's more, you guessed it, just a mouse area. So we've got mouse area. Let's go ahead and fill it. Now this is where we're going to implement two little JavaScripts. First off, the color, right? We're going to say if the area dot pressed Notice the question mark, we're doing a ternary operator. And the colon, so if it's not pressed, we're gonna say gray. This is a JavaScript property binding. Not a true property binding, mind you. We're just using JavaScript in the property. Now, we want to do in a signal handler. We've done this before. These should look very, very familiar. Sometimes using a ternary operator in a property is a little cumbersome and QML does not always pick that up. So definitely test it for your specific version. I'm going to say print and let's go ahead and make a var. We'll say var max equals root dot height. Now we've talked about scope in JavaScript. We have an ID root and because it's in the global scope, actually the global scope's up here, but it's in a upper scope, we can actually access it down here. That's how that works. So we've got scope here, scope here, scope here, scope here, and we can access it all the way up. Same thing with box. We can access that because it's right here. Ta-da! Works very elegantly. Now we're going to say box.x equals... Let's test this and see if it works. We've got a gray box, mouse down, turns orange, and ta-da. Pretty cool, pretty easy. Now, some things you should understand right off the bat here. Making mistakes is very, very simple. And because that is not a logical mistake, JavaScript and the Cute Creator ID are not going to catch it. That's where testing comes in. Uh-oh, we did a very big boo-boo. There we go, width. That could have been very, very bad. But that's what I mean. You have to do some testing. Don't always trust that Cute, Cute Creator or the JavaScript engine is going to catch your mistakes. What's up, everybody? This is Brian. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of a larger series out on Udemy.com called QML for Beginners. The QML for Beginners course assumes you know absolutely zero QML. You're just starting off, and it's designed specifically for Qt5. I will re-record the entire series when Qt6 comes out, and just know that it's over 100 videos and 13 and a half hours of video on demand. I'll put a link below so you can get a highly discounted rate. 
And before you dive in, just understand it covers a lot more than what I can put into this list. Everything from what's QML to animations to C++, integration, JavaScript, and on and on and on. But one of the requirements up front is you have to know Qt Core. You should have some C++ under your belt and be very familiar with Qt 5. In case you have none of that, I do have some courses for Qt Core beginners, intermediate and advanced out on Udemy as well. Hope to see you there.